It's made possible by a grant from Public Service of New Hampshire. From the studios of Channel 11 in Durham, this is Granite State Challenge, a weekly competition of quick recall between two of New Hampshire's high schools. Featured this week, Interlakes High School and Winnicunit High School. Hello again. Welcome to the second edition of Granite State Challenge. I'm Tom Bergeron. As you may know by now, our quiz show stresses the quick recall of specific factual information and does not necessar necessarily represent the full range of academic ability of either the students assembled here or the schools they represent. So let's meet without any further ado the uh, team members assembled by their respective schools. First, the Lakers of Interlakes High, including Captain Joseph Golden, Lori Herman, Bruce Reno, and Cami Vazifter. And in the audience, the coaches for the Interlake uh, School, Charles Greenwood and David Ashambo, and the student alternates today, Tim Walsh and Chris Kozak. <laughs> and they are being challenged by the Warriors of Winnicunit, including team captain Gary Pattenode, Stephen Trask, John Dodge, and David Young. And their coach here with them this evening is Thomas Haggerty, along with student alternates Leslie Pierce and Mona Scrofano. Now, our judge for this evening is Mrs. Eleanor Milliken of the Science Department at the Oyster River High School in Durham. If there are any questions about the correctness of an answer when it's different from the one here on my ever-loving cards, Mrs. Milliken's decision will be final. Now, we play Granite State Challenge in three rounds, and I'll explain how each round works as we go along. The first round is uh, ten-point toss-up questions. I will ask a question of you. Whoever uh, buzzes first will get the first shot at it. If you answer incorrectly, we have a turnover, and that means that the other team has a shot at those ten points. If that's all clear, we're all set to go. With the first point, a uh, ten-point toss-up question in the first round of Granite State Challenge, the Alamo served as a fort, and many men died there defending it. In what city? Is the Alamo located? In what city is the Alamo located? All right, Joseph Interlakes. Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is incorrect, as the buzzer so politely informed us. Now we go to the Warriors of Winnicunit. In what city is the Alamo located? David Winnicunit. El Paso. El Paso is also incorrect. San Antonio, Texas was the uh, location of the Alamo. I guess you didn't watch Walt Disney on Sunday nights. Uh. <laughs> what British statesman coined the phrase blood, toil, sweat, and tears? All right, John, Winnicunit. Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill is correct. Winnicunit's on the scoreboard with 10 points. That's how we play Granite State Challenge. All right, two Minnesota physicians achieved worldwide fame for their skill. They established a medical facility at Rochester, Minnesota. Name either the brothers or the facility. Either one, the brothers or the facility. All right, the Mayo Brothers or Clinic. Those are the two answers we would have accepted. Also for 10 points, though this be madness, yet there is method in it. This line is spoken in which of Shakespeare's plays? Though this be madness. Uh, Cammy interlaced. Macbeth. Macbeth is incorrect. All right, the Warriors of Winnicott have a shot at it. John? Hamlet. Okay, John, that's right. Hamlet is correct. All right, just, I would ask and caution you, just wait to be recognized before you give the answer. As well as a synonym for terrible and final conflict, this geographical site is referred to in the book of Revelation as the location of the last great battle, which will culminate in the return of Jesus Christ to earth in glory. What is it called? The last great battle. Yes, John. When Armageddon. It comes, Armageddon is correct. John, John is on a roll here at this time. American foreign policy in the late 1940s was directed against the expansion strategy of the USSR. This policy can best be described by which of these words? Imperialism, containment, isolationism, or colonialism? John again. When containment? It comes containment, yes, is correct, John. John's going for his own show at this time. 
The score is now uh, 40 Winnicunit, and the uh, Lakers uh, have not gotten on the scoreboard right now. A demagogue is an unscrupulous leader. What is a pedagogue? A pedagogue. All right, David Winnicunit. A teacher. A teacher is correct, yes. All right, another 10-point toss-up question. Fulton's Folly was a steamboat. What was Clinton's big ditch? Clinton's big ditch. Yes, John. The Erie Canal. The Erie Canal is correct, John, right. All right, now here we have a math toss-up question for you. A fence 320 feet long has wooden posts, each 40 feet apart. How many posts are there? All right, Joseph, interlakes. Eight. Eight is incorrect sorry warriors have a chance at this one all right david seven seven is also incorrect nine posts 320 feet divided into 40 foot lengths eight segments plus one more post at the end for a total of nine all right a 20th century drama written by thornton wilder had as its setting a fictional town in new hampshire named grover's corners what was the name of the play john our town our town is correct yes <laughs> All right. Please look at the monitors, if you would, in the studio. This is a self-portrait of one of the greatest painters of all time. Born in Leiden, Holland in 1606, he produced work distinguished by the skillful contrast of light and dark. Who is the famous artist whose portrait is shown here? All right, Gary, when it cut it? Monet. Monet is incorrect. We have a chance for the Lakers to take this one. Yes, Cammie. So Sarah? Cicero is also incorrect. It is a picture of Rembrandt. Rembrandt. Apparently, he didn't paint himself to everyone's uh, likeness. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do we call the cows that ants keep for the honey-like fluid which the insects yield? What do we call the cows that ants keep for the honey-like fluid which the insects yield? Cows is in quotes here. Might help some of you. All right. Aphids is what we were looking for. Aphids. Trite, trite means given to using stale phrases. What does contrite mean? Contrite. All right, Stephen, when it comes. Um, precise. Precise is incorrect. We give the Lakers a shot at this one. Contrite. All right, humble, remorseful, or guilty. Contrite. The Arab guerrilla organization demanding territory from Israel for a Palestinian state is known by what full name? We're looking for the full name. All right, uh, Bruce, interlakes. Palestinian Liberation Organization? Is correct. Palestinian Liberation Organization. And interlakes gets on the scoreboard. England expects that every man will do his duty. So said a great naval commander on the eve of the Battle of Trafalgar at which he led the British over the French-Spanish fleet. Yes, Bruce of Interlakes. Nelson? Pardon? Nelson? Right, Lord uh. Horatio Nelson. <laughs> All it required was a penknife and guts plus a humidifier. So said the American theologian Dr. J.A. Saunders about his delicate task of unrolling some documents discovered in 1956. What did Dr. Saunders unroll? What did Dr. Saunders unroll? The Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls. All right, now here's a musical question, a 10-point toss-up. Listen to the speakers in the studio as I read the question. This composition by the modern English composer Ralph Vaughan Williams is based on one of England's most ancient melodies, popular in Shakespeare's time. Later, it became a children's lullaby and is probably best known to us today as a Christmas carol. Name this well-known English folk song. Yes, Kevin. Green sleeves are Green what? Green sleeves is correct, right. <laughs> All right, who is the commander-in-chief of the Army, Navy, and Air Force of the United States? Yes, John, when it comes... Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, the president of the United States, correct. All right. We have uh, Lakers at 30 and Winnicott at 80 right now. This question has two parts. You must answer both parts to get the 10-point toss-up question. Identify both the author and the title of the classic in which the main character says, Please, sir, I want some more. 
We're looking for the author and the title of the classic. Yes, Oliver uh, David. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I'm sorry, David, what? Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. That is correct. Oliver Twist, Charles Dickens. And that whistle, that whistle means it's the end of round one with the score, Winnicott at 90 and Interlakes 30 at the end of round one. Now, we're going to take a bit of a breather right now and to show you a look at Interlakes High School, which was prepared by Mr. Paul Bodwin and narrated by Team Captain Joseph Golden. Interlakes High School is located in the town of Meredith, which lies on the northwest edge of Lake Winnipesaukee. The school was constructed in 1957, and a substantial addition was completed in 1981. Interlakes, which currently enrolls over 500 junior-senior high school students, serves the communities of Meredith, Center Harbor, and Sandwich. The school offers three major courses of study, college preparatory, business, and vocational technical, as well as a wide variety of extracurricular activities. And we'll be taking a look at Winnicott High School a little later on in this Granite State Challenge. Right now we begin round two, which starts off very similar to round one. The only exception is when one team gets a 10-point toss-up question, they're then eligible to answer a bonus question, and they can confer on the bonus question, which usually comes in five-point multiples, usually between uh, 10 and 20 points you're eligible to get in the bonus section. All right, we'll start with the 10-point toss-up. Explain the relative positions of the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon in a solar eclipse. The relative positions of the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon in a solar eclipse. All right, Gary, when it cut it? They are in a straight line with the Moon being in the middle of the Sun and the Earth. That's correct. There you go. All right. Winnicott is thus now eligible for a bonus question. I'll give you the subtitle of famous literary works. You have a possibility of getting an extra 15 points here, along with the author. The subtitle, along with the author, for five points each, you give me the title. Life Among the Lowly by Harriet Beecher Stowe is the subtitle of that famous work. What is its actual full title? Life Among the Lowly is the subtitle. Little Women. Little Women is incorrect. Uncle Tom's Cabin is what we were going for. All right, for five points now, The Whale by Herman Melville is the subtitle of that famous work. Moby Dick. Moby Dick. Moby Dick is correct. You've got five points. All right, now to go for ten, an episode of The Civil War by Stephen Crane. What is the main title of an episode of, of The Civil War? The Red Badge of Courage. Red Badge of Courage is correct. You have ten of a possible fifteen. <laughs> Now we go back to the 10-point toss-up questions. Odessa and Sevastopol are well-known Black Sea ports. To which one of the Soviet republics do they belong? All right, Bruce, Interlakes. Georgia. Georgia is incorrect. The Warriors have a chance to get it. Odessa and Sevastopol are well-known Black Sea ports. To which one of the Soviet republics do they belong? The Ukraine. A race of monsters in Greek mythology had the head, trunk, and arms of a man and the body and legs of a horse. Members of this race were called what? Yes, Joseph Interlakes. Centaurs. Centaurs is correct. All right. It's 10 points. Now the possibility to get some more, and you can confer on this. For five points apiece, name the island or island groups on which you would find these cities. Reykjavik. You would find where? Iceland. Iceland is correct for five points. Okay. Messina. Messina. And caution the audience, please, to keep their answers to themselves at this point. Sicily. Sicily is correct. Uh, I want a ruling from the judges. Did you hear? Okay. All right. So you got uh, ten points now for Sicily. And Manila was found where still is Manila Philippines that's right so you've got 15 of the possible 15 very good all right uh, here's from your expressions one of your favorite uh, categories another math toss-up uh, a plane travels m miles at the rate of r miles per hour in terms of m and r how many hours does the trip take 
Plane travels.